of Seek Sustainable Japan today, and we are talking about minka, kominka, akia, remodeling old Japanese houses, and the exciting minka summit with the organizers who are doing the event in April. Thank you guys so much for joining today and giving us a bit of a preview of what we might expect in the April event. Yeah. Yay. Great thing you for having us. <laughs> Wonderful to have you here. So I have talked with all of you on different workshops or interviews on my series. It's so wonderful to have you back and doing this exciting event. So Stuart, you gave us a talk about your Minka renovation and rural relocation outside Kyoto. And this is actually your area where the event is gonna be held, right? Yes, yes, it's just down the road, in fact. So yeah, it's a really nice area. I think particularly people who uh, have only experienced uh, urban Japan and the big megalopolises and so on um, are going to be in for a wonderful surprise when they come up here because we're really close to central Kyoto. Uh, from uh, downtown, it's only a little more than a one-hour drive north, uh, but it's another world. It's, it's all uh, beautiful forests and rivers and mountains and things, so... It's, it's a really nice area to have it. Awesome. Can't wait to hear more details in just a minute as after mm. I introduce all, all three of you. Now, Wendy, uh, you and your husband did a fantastic workshop for us, uh, cooking Mexican <laughs> organic food from plants from your garden. Uh, we had a great workshop. You have also written a wonderful article on Kominka Japan about how buying your house took four years but now you guys are actually officially farmers as well. So it was a long process, but worth it, right? Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> and in the meantime, we've bought a house across the road that is actually a Minka. <clears throat> so we're working on restoring it. Wow, fantastic. And Lauren, uh, we talked last year or two years ago and okay. you gave, I think it was last year, right? And you yeah, gave us, last summer. you gave us lots of great insights about your Minka, which we can see right behind you, and your renovation DIY projects. And you're going to yeah. be one of the speakers uh, doing a workshop and lecture at the event, right? Yeah, a presentation. Probably not so much a workshop, but definitely a presentation. Yeah, I was kind of hoping uh, you might show us how you're doing your beautiful scrunchy <laughs> art on your on your sliding doors that we talked about in the video. Oh, right. That was awesome. Right. <laughs> Maybe next year. Maybe next year, yeah. Um, so Stuart, you want to give us a little bit of the backstory about how this event developed from the Facebook group or from the website? Yeah, well, it, it kind of happened uh, suddenly and surprisingly. Uh, back in 2016, when I first got my Minka, um, shortly during that summer, uh, I connected with Lauren and her husband, Pat, and they came down from Kanazawa and we spent the day together and, uh, we got to talking and I was saying, uh, gee, you know, there must be other people like us, other foreigners living in, uh, throughout Japan in restoring various uh, minka. Uh, it would be great if there was some way to connect with those people. And Lauren, it was Lauren actually who said, well, why don't you just create a Facebook page? So I created a Facebook page. And after a couple months, we had nine people on the page and uh, it gradually became inactive. So by early 2017, it was pretty much dead and unloved. And then someone, maybe, maybe Lauren again, actually told me about another Facebook page called building and renovating uh, houses or homes in Japan. And that, yeah, there it is. And it's a, it's a great Facebook page full of information and information about everything about apartments about brand new houses about old houses and about maybe five or ten percent of it was uh minka and people living inaka in the countryside so i kind of 
uh, sheepishly said, well, we have this other little Facebook page that is specifically Minka for those of you that are interested in talking about Minka. And this was last spring. And in the first um, probably two months after I, I made that brief mention, uh, the site ballooned to like 600 members and then it's just kept going up. And now we have about 1,500 people on the site. And uh, beyond the numbers, the numbers themselves are not so important, but what's been really wonderful is that everybody on the site is very active and everybody is willing to share their um, knowledge and their experiences. So if you have a question about uh, redoing your floors or insulating uh, your back walls of your minka, or you have questions about plumbing or maki stoves or where can I find, uh, you know, stone lanterns, five or six people will immediately start providing you with really good answers and links and information and they'll share their experiences and share photos of what they're working on. So it's been this really great thing that has um, fueled itself. And then there was so much activity and excitement and interest going on that um, I gathered together some of the more active uh, people on the site, like Wendy and others, and uh, we created a board and we decided to create a dedicated uh, website so that people that aren't on Facebook can go there, but also that we can start archiving all of this really invaluable information uh, so that it's not lost. You know, the, the disadvantage of Facebook, of course, is that it's all giant, this one long scroll that you have to search through if you want to find something. So uh, we did that. And then we also decided to do this Minka Summit. And the uh, initial idea was, gee, it'd be great if we could get, you know, 30 or 40 people together to come from different parts of Japan so we could all meet one another and talk about Minka. And that also, like the Facebook page, just uh, ballooned as some really outstanding uh, guests volunteered to come and make a presentation and to bring stuff. And um, it just got bigger and bigger. And so now it's, it's become this big event. So we're very excited about uh, the, the possibility of bringing together uh, basically two, two groups of people, people that have Minka, but are still sort of doing ongoing improvements and renovations. And so it's a chance for them to connect with other Minka owners, as well as uh, 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 companies that sell Minka services or components and organizations that help preserve Minka and promote Inaka businesses. And then this other group of people that are uh, interested in Minka and are thinking about buying a Minka or are actively searching to, to find a Minka, we're going to have things like a, um, a kind of introduction to Akia Bank programs that they can go to, where an, an experienced Akia Bank person can take them through the whole process. They can meet with representatives of, of Akia Bank programs and talk with them. So there's a, there's a lot of really wonderful things that can happen, I think. Awesome. I've just added the Minka Summit event page um, in the mm. comments if anybody hasn't seen it yet. And I'll put all the links below for everything that we talk about. Uh, one other exciting thing I think about the event is because you're inviting the Minka curious, right? The people who are right. considering uh, buying a Minka or who are just curious mm. and want to see what it looks like when it's when it's not mm. remodeled, when it's being remodeled and when it's finished. So you're going to have like house tours, which I think is really exciting. Yes. Too, right? Yes. And the idea there is we want to be able to have tours of Minka that people actually live in and uh, have been renovated. And um, so they can see those, but they, they can also see uh, Minka that are for sale or rent. They can see Minka in uh, different stages of renovation. We have one uh, Minka set that is sort of just at the beginning. So it's like at the, at the very first stage of renovation. So they can kind of hopefully see 
the entire process and see a variety of different styles and periods of Minka. Yeah, wonderful. So exciting. Uh, Wendy, you want to talk a little bit about the speaker lineup? Oh, sorry. I think I've Thank muted you. you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to kind of start by saying that um, you will see, Joy, you will see uh, yourself reflected a lot in this list. Um, I, I love it. <laughs> I, I, talking to different people who have sort of entered the world of Minka, um, there can be a sense that you're all alone, you're doing it, you're the only person in the village, um, you're doing it alone. And um, it was really your show. You had um, Paul Friedel on and um, I was like, wow, some somebody's doing this. I mean, he's doing it at a much grander scale than, than what we were trying to accomplish. Um, but it got me hooked on your show and um, to see all of the different aspects that come into um, rural life and, and Aminka and how valuable that connection is in, in the sense of you're not all alone, that there are people that you can talk to. And so when the Facebook group came up, I was all over it. I was so excited to think about meeting um, other people who were um, taking this big step. Um, so, uh, really excited to be involved in it and, um, so thankful, um, to Stuart for, uh, having me be a part of it. Um, in terms of the speakers that we're drawing in, we tried to, um, get a, a variety of backgrounds and, and layers of expertise. Um, should we uh, mention the keynote speaker first, maybe? Stuart, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, uh, well, we were really, really fortunate uh, to uh, get Alex Carr, who um, I think is one of the you know major names in in Minka, and he's an, an important writer about uh, Japanese culture and and so on. Uh, but he, uh, boy, where to begin? Uh, he. One of the things that I noticed is that when we when the site first started becoming really active, uh, one of the things that people shared immediately were uh, Alex Carr's uh, TED Talk, where he talked a, a video you could find on YouTube and elsewhere, where he talks about Minka and Inaka life and trying to the, the struggle to try to bring these small villages back. And I think uh, for the vast majority of us on the Kominka Japan Facebook page, uh, that was almost, you know, the single most source, uh, important source of inspiration for so many of us. Um, so he was really at the top of our list to ask to be a, a keynote speaker. And we were delighted that he not only uh, said yes, but uh, Alex these days uh, spends about, I think, six months out of the year in Thailand. So he comes back and forth and he actually uh, has rearranged his schedule to be able to come to this event. So we're really uh, honored and excited to have him. So I, th yeah. we're just thrilled. Really exciting. And I, I have been in touch with Alex and he's going to be on the show next month. So we're going to have a little yeah, bit of yeah, a yeah. preview conversation about what he might touch on in his keynote. Um, his latest okay. book, I believe, is about Bangkok and how he sees mm. so many parallels between how development in Japan has, has gone. Um, but he's been so much more than just developing his own Akiya or Minka in Shitose or this area of Ia Valley, right? He's done so much consulting, work on salvaging the old beautiful wood when buildings come down. So he has a wealth of knowledge over many years, probably the longest running Minka expert in Japan, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's he he looks quite young, but he's he's been around for a long time. So, yeah. Wonderful, uh, Wendy. You want to talk about some of the other speakers? Sure. Um, we're going to have Chuck Kaiser, who is an organic farmer and uh, experienced at um, building or, or uh, bringing land back that has been fallow um, and and making it productive again and um, 
uh, his work. Um, we're also going to have John Stolmeyer and his partner, uh, Kohai Yamamoto, um, who are traditional Japanese carpenters and uh, working on um, building uh, houses and refurbishing houses using the bones of old Minka. Um, we have Kyle Holtzhuter, who uh, is a permaculture expert, um, but also has a, a PhD basically in um, plastering techniques. Um, I was able to go out to his place and see what he was doing with innovative um, methods of plastering and roofing, um, also using sort of the bones of old Minka. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, let's see, Jaya Thursfield, who's probably better known as Tokyo Yama, um, is going to be talking about uh, the real estate process, um, the taxes involved, um, how he got his house, which isn't a super old house, but it's definitely um, a traditional um, style Japanese house and the work that he has done on it. Um, cooperating with traditional Japanese carpenters and um, craftsmen. Um, Asby Brown is going to be coming. Um, he has a book that's coming out. And um, basically, I think his theme is going to uh, look at um, ideas of sustainability um, through time and how that is captured in Japanese architecture. Yeah, wonderful. He's Here. got so much knowledge about design, architecture, and the history, as well as working with temple carpenters himself when he first yeah. started his career. So really exciting to have him on. He's got his own playlist. He's been on this series so many times. Such a wealth <laughs> of knowledge, right? Um, John Stolenmeyer, I showed the, the video. I've also visited his uh, carpentry studio and saw work in progress. So he's going to be very exciting to have at your event with his partner there too. They have a lot of knowledge using old tools as well is so interesting. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully they can give some insights about a lot of the uh, like construction and, and joinery that you mentioned in the event plan. Right. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. Now, Lauren, Lauren, you are one of the speakers. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what you're going to talk about, your personal journey with uh, DIY and renovation? Lauren can't hear you. One more time. Can you try again? I can't hear you. Can you hear Lauren, Wendy, or or Stuart? No, no? I I can I can hear. Do you want me you to? Can hear? Yeah, you can hear Lauren. Lauren, I can't hear you for some reason. I can't, I can't hear Lauren either. I can't hear her. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lauren, maybe disconnect your mic and plug it in again, or check that you're not on mute. Are you there? No. Yeah. Maybe come out and come in again and uh, we'll, we'll try to catch up on your, your talk in a minute. Um, Wendy, do you want to talk about uh, other talks a little sure. bit more? Do you have yeah. any others? Um, one, one thing I'm particularly excited about is this community relations panel. Um, I know mm. when we moved to our little town um, here in Nagano, um, I kind of, it, I had heard things about, oh, you know, they're not going to be, ex your neighbors aren't going to be accepting. They're probably not going to want you there. Don't look for friends there. Um, so I got kind of like this negative impression of what it was going to be like with the community and um, found it to be absolutely not the case. Um, and uh, we made, we made efforts um, to, join in with community events. And I would say that we're, you know, we're not, uh, we're not locals by a long shot, um, but that it's been a really good experience. And um, 
from that, I thought something that uh, would be helpful for these um, Kominka curious um, people is to think about it not just as a house, um, but to think about it as being part of a community. And I thought it would be helpful to bring in people with more experience than I have um, at, at this. And um, so I pulled together um, three people who are going to be this community relations panel, and they'll be able to talk about their own lived experience and um, maybe give, give some advice for people who are make, looking to make that move. So um, first I have Xian Li, who is originally from Singapore. He went to Waseda, um, is fluent in Japanese and um, is living in a small town in Wakayama and actually rented a house and was in the process, is in the process of fixing it up, um, but also expanding um, his presence there by opening a, a cafe. Um, amazing guy. He has a, a YouTube channel with really well edited, beautiful videos um, about his his life there. Um, and so uh, hoping to hear some interesting things from him. Um, you may have heard of Rebecca Otoa. She's uh, an author um, and she moved to her small town that's up by Lake Biwa um, in Shiga. And she moved in as a young bride to her mother-in-law's house and was the daughter-in-law in this um, very old house um, for 12 years. Um, and she is still living in that house. Um, and so she'll have some insights into, um, you know, what that means and um, how, how she has adapted over time. And, and of course her, her experience is pretty unique, um, but she has, uh, she, has, she has a good antenna up about uh, cultural difference and how that, how that works. Um, and then uh, finally here we have Shelly Clark, um, who is in Shizuoka and she fell in love with Minka and um, went on this um, strategic, um, uh, plan to find her Minka by getting on her bike. And um, she had a big map and she rode an hour out in every direction on every road and uh, finally found the perfect little town. And she has a Minka that she fixed up, but she kept looking across the river and up the hill at this very big complex. And kept saying to people, somebody ought to, somebody ought to buy that. It's, you know, it's, it's empty and um, it's, it's too nice to be empty. Um, and then she eventually ended up buying it and fixing it up. So she's um, renting a cafe there and a Airbnb. Um, and she has done a lot of work at incorporating local people into her businesses um, and uh, just the whole future of this community, um, it, it, it's wrapped up into her efforts as well. That's, yeah. that's awesome. I've, I've talked to so many people who have moved from the city out to the rural area. Uh, for example, Byron and Cowdy, Nagy, and they, they talk about the importance of going and renting something in the area you're thinking of buying or going back again and again to visit that area to make sure this is not only the area that you like, but the community that you like. And so I really love that aspect, Wendy, of bringing in a panel of people who are really trying to integrate with their community. Um, Cause I have talked to other people who try to just go in and push their new ideas and, and not really work with the community. And that just did not work well, you know, they ended up giving up. So such a key element, right? And I, I think that, um, all of these speakers, like there's, we could have two weeks worth of Kominka Summit speakers. Um, I, they're, we hope, um, going to be future events, other opportunities to expand on these ideas. So I hope that people don't see this as, you know, the limited amount of expertise or the limited amount of people that know something about community relations, but it's just a beginning. And, if we can do anything near what you've been able to do with your series about bringing people together and seeing that you don't have to reinvent the wheel, that you can 
use other people's expertise. And when things are tough um, and rough and you just need somebody to talk about how cold your house is, um, <laughs> that there's somebody who's been there. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, just, you know, just, miss, yeah. missing also speaking is going to be the imminent Joy Walsh, um, who... <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit about what? what oh well, I'll I'll make a little plug for what I I'm planning to talk about after Lauren. Um, but I just want to give a shout out to Davo who's on chat right now, and he says now that I am Santa Claus in the neighborhood, he's pretty solid in his <laughs> That's neighborhood. Great. That's awesome. Um, would love to do an inter intergenerational community hangout center. What a great idea. I love that. <laughs> so Lauren, tell us a little bit yeah. about now that I think your your mic is working. Tell us a yeah, little bit about so. what you're planning to talk about. Um, yeah, so we became unintentional Minka owners. Um, I, I feel sometimes guilty when I read of the people that are searching and searching and searching because we we got lucky, I guess. Um, somebody recommended. Yo, honey, this is live. Um, somebody recommended a Minka to us and it, it didn't work out and we thought, oh well. Um, but the real estate agent involved was passionate and a few months later she introduced us to this one and it seemed to tick all the boxes and we, we moved in. Um, and then we just started working on it really gradually. That was about um, five years ago, six years ago now, I guess. Gosh. Um, so it was a very slow project in the beginning, and then we just um, did a little more, a little more, everything out of pocket and just ourselves. Um, also fortunate that my husband is a master builder, plumber, electrician, and he can pretty much everything you need to do. So, um, And then as Stuart mentioned at the beginning, just um, going to the uh, secondhand stores and salvage and all of that just sort of all came together. And then um, I guess the silver lining uh, of COVID, because I'm in the travel business, so I had no time until COVID um, gave us this last couple of years with not a lot of distraction to really go at it full time. So we actually were able to move in uh, about three months ago. And uh, still working on it, never ending project, I'm sure, but uh, it's a lot easier without the commute every day. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. I've I've actually talked to a few people who are using this downtime from the travel industry mm -hmm. to get out into these beautiful areas and renovate old houses and do mm -hmm. that life transition mm -hmm. as, during coronavirus. And we all expected it to be over by now. Um, looks like it's going to be a little bit longer before travel industry rebounds. But um, right. I'm so glad that you've been able to find such a beautiful house. And your yeah. DIY and creativity is amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, we sometimes wonder because we, we never really had a plan. You know, we, we didn't have drawings. We didn't have you know, more than just discussions, really. Um, if Patrick were here, he'd say discussions. That's a nice word for it. Um, but somehow we, we got to where we, we wanted to be. Um, yeah, and we're still married, awesome. which is amazing also, yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nothing like and a full-time renovation to that's challenge. That's the true it. test, right? <laughs> uh, move move out to the middle of nowhere where you yeah. only have your, your partner as company. Um, right. Dave has a comment here. Hooray for recycle shops. So much great stuff. And, yeah. and actually, Stuart, this is part of the event, right? To have... Um, antiques or like uh, from dealers and, and different businesses, which will give those insights right, right. about resources. Uh, maybe a good time to talk about some of the sponsors of the event. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have we have sponsors. We have a, a growing list of participants in our, our Minka Mall that we're calling it. And uh, we hope to fill that up with at least uh 30 or more booths. I think we can um, accommodate maybe up to 45 total, but uh, we're already, we're in the early days of that, but we're starting to get some amazing uh, people and companies and organizations uh, involved. Uh, the previous maybe image you just saw. Maybe should we introduce the facility? 
where the all yeah, the events yeah. will be. Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, this is a place called Koryu no Mori. It's, um, I think it's like slightly more than 1,000 hectares of, of land. It's very popular with hiking and running events and fishing and uh, things like that, uh, forestry related events. Uh, but it's a really beautiful facility and um, they have, uh, it's not Minka, but all their buildings are beautiful traditional wood structures and um, you can do barbecue there as you see um and uh yeah it's kind of an ideal setting because it's it's very beautiful and uh it has kind of the basic uh facilities that we need so for instance with our minka mall we're using this big sort of indoor outdoor space that's uh quite vast and with COVID in mind it's also really good because it's completely covered and protected from the rain as you can see there it is uh but on three sides of it, they can open up all the walls, all the doors to let the air flow. So it's, it's <clears throat> pretty safe in terms of COVID because you have an almost outdoor environment, but also protected in case of, of bad weather. Um, and it's also big and we're going to be able to not only have booths there, but also uh, simultaneously workshops. So some of the uh, speakers that Wendy mentioned will be participating in, in workshops as well, doing uh, traditional carpentry. We have someone coming who's going to be do, showing us how to do uh, uh, paper uh, table lamps and floor lamps and that kind of thing. So again, it's the early days of that, but there's a lot of interesting things coming. So we have, for example, um, uh, we have uh, Bartok Design Company, which uh, is a maker of traditional wooden baths. Uh, the owner or co-owner is Italian, I believe. So if you're an Italian speaker, you might have some interesting conversations there. Oh, there, there they are. And uh, they do these great uh, wooden baths. Uh, we also have um, uh, Kohachi Beer Works, which is a uh traditional or excuse me a, a micro brewery but it's based in a in a, a minka environment in inaka and uh let's see who else uh we also have a uh, toda kokuten coming which is a, an architectural design and construction company uh they were involved in uh, a lot of interesting minka preservation uh, projects through the years. Um, I believe it was uh, Toda Kokuten that was involved in uh, rescuing uh, one Minka and uh, disassembling it and then transporting it to Oregon of all places to be re reconstituted and uh, restored there. So that project is underway. And uh, they are based in Aichi, and so uh, they're affiliated with Aichi Prefecture Kominka Association, which will also be coming. And uh, we also, again, we're still in the early days, but we hope to have a lot of Akia Bank programs represented in the Minka Mall, not just from the Kansai area, but we hope to get some Akia Bank programs involved from other parts of Japan, um, possibly as far away as Hokkaido, for instance. So that's that's in the works. Um, so that's that's very exciting, and we're we're really looking. It's it's going to be a nice variety of things of people that people can see. So if you are interested in um, furnishing your your minka, there will be people there selling old tansu and ranma and uh, uh, different minka components, doors and things like that. So just uh, all kinds of different things going on. Wow, it sounds fantastic. Um, so in terms of the schedule, uh, Wendy, yeah. do you want to talk about the schedule or Stuart? Uh, so people come on the Friday from 3 p.m. and start checking in, is that right? Yeah, basically uh, Friday afternoon, you come in and you register and you'll get an information packet. Uh, and, and then sort of one of the main things is at the time of registration, you'll want to sign up for the Minka tours. So we're going to have a giant board displayed with uh, photos and images of all the different Minka you can visit. 
And they're going to be, as I said earlier, there's going to be Minka that people are living in, and then there's going to be Minka uh, for sale or rent. And you'll be able to go uh, through this list and create your own itinerary. So depending on your interest, if you're someone who's searching for a Minka, you might want to look at you know, Minka over here. And if you're more interested in uh, renovation ideas, you can go look at these Minka and you create your own schedule. And we'll have um, links to Google Maps and directions and things so you can carefully plan out uh, your, your, your tour on Saturday and Sunday mornings. So Friday is registration and the Minka tours. And then also Friday night, we're going to have a meet and greet where people can uh, meet one another in a nice social environment and we can introduce uh, some of the speakers that are present. So that's going to be Friday. And then Saturday we have the, and Sunday we and have the Minka tours. Friday, the, yeah. Friday night is the, the opening event and the keynote speak is at the dinner the first night. Is that right? Is, no, the dinner is on no. Saturday night. So Friday night oh, is okay. just a, kind of a social gathering. Okay. And then Saturday and Sunday uh, morning, we have the Minka tours. And then in the afternoon, uh, most of the presentations will be happening during the afternoon. And then simultaneously, we'll have things going on in the Minka mall, including some workshops. And then Saturday night is the uh, dinner and keynote speech with Alex Carr. Oh. And then uh, even Sunday, uh, from eight to one on the website, it says tours. You can do tours from the Minka 8 tours, right? I love the early start. Yay! I'm yeah, a yeah. Morning person. <laughs> and then well, you've the got problem the Minka, is we the Minka Mall from ten to three, right? and then the workshops. And the closing is three p.m. on Sunday. Right. Is that right? Right. Yeah, the problem is we have it's just an embarrassment of riches. We have so many great speakers. We have so many people coming to the Minka Mall. We have the tours that we want to do. It's uh, the real challenge for us in recent weeks <clears throat> has been trying to figure out how to schedule everything in a way that people can see, you know, at least almost everything. You know, it's going to be really difficult. Uh, to cram everything in. I mean, we had a lively discussion a few days ago about when are people going to be able to eat lunch? There's no time. <laughs> so, Yeah, well, we can, hopefully you won't have strict rules about eating while we listen to a lecture or eating, <laughs> eating in our car when we're going out to the tour or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that brings me to my next question. Um, getting around, you say a lot of the tours and everything is between five and 30 minutes from the main venue. Um, most people will be using their own cars. I assume it's kind of difficult to get around otherwise, right? Right, right. Yeah, I suspect we may have a few people coming who don't have a car who are going to come up by bus or uh, some other means. And uh, we're going to also have, uh, Wendy actually came up with this great idea of having a kind of communications, um, board that people can say, oh, I'm looking for somebody to help me renovate my flooring or things like that. But we also want to try to do some carpooling so that people that the, the relatively few number of people, I think it'll be less than 5% that don't have a car can maybe uh carpool with somebody to be able to get to some of these tours so that sounds great um, yeah like when you check in you you could say i'm going to this tour i got three empty seats who's in right mm, right <laughs> awesome. right wendy did you want to talk about that a little bit more um just that we wanted a way for people to be able to communicate and also re recognizing that not everybody is going to be able to come to the conference itself, but they may want to, you know, have a little flyer there that talks about, um, you know, come stay at my Airbnb in this sort of Minka in this place, and then feel like they're more part of the uh, part of the activity. Um, but uh, yeah, just drawing in, you know, stuff that people have for sale, stuff that they're looking for. Um, you know, anybody else dealing with this kind of issue? Um, and and we can just, you know, I, I kind of envisioned a big 
a big bulletin board where stuff is thumbtacked to it or a rope with little clothespins um, that uh, it would just put people um, in, in contact. Yeah, sounds good. As a great networking event, as well as community support and just finding out information. There's so many great aspects of the event that you guys are working on. Must be a lot of work. <laughs> heated heated discussions i imagine about how to fit everything in right good job uh, well that's that's true i mean it's again it's I, all the credit is goes to all of the members of the uh kominka japan facebook page and and how uh, i mean people are coming f uh forward to volunteer and uh offer to help with the the technical aspects because of course we're going to with the presentations we're going to be doing a lot of powerpoint and uh video projection and things and and we've had a number of people volunteer just for that and all of the speakers and all of the 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 people that have been coming forward expressing interest in becoming a corporate sponsor um which reminds me i should uh acknowledge mm -hmm. uh daimon brewery is now our a uh, premium corporate sponsor, and they're a really interesting company doing uh, interesting work. They did a major renovation of their sake brewery, and um, uh, the co-owner co of the company, Marcus, uh, just recently I uh, was one of several people that helped him locate a, uh, a Minka in Wachi, uh, that he's now in the early stages of renovating. So he's very um uh he's one of us he's one of these people that's now doing this this big project and so there's going to be a um uh sake tasting and other uh events related to his company as well looks great fantastic um you also mentioned a brewery in the beginning i wasn't fast enough to show the the website. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, um, Ko Kohachi uh, Beer Works. They, uh, uh, they are a microbrewery based in uh, Kyotamba, I think. And uh, they are also uh, Minka based. And uh, they are uh, a Belgian and a Japanese couple. And they're doing some really interesting things as well. Lauren, I think you know them a little better than I do. What can you tell us about them? Yeah. Um, I w I'm looking forward to getting to know them better. I, I visited when they were about a third of the way through the renovation, uh, right at the very beginning of COVID. So I'm really looking forward to going back and seeing it completed. Um, but they're just such an energetic couple and they have so many great ideas about sustainability and, and preservation and, um, and of course they're making this amazing beer um, and food and it's just it's a wonderful addition uh, to the, the landscape up there which which touches on another thing which is that uh w one aspect of the discussions that will be happening at the summit is ways that you can um use your your minka uh, property and land uh, to create some kind of business that will uh, help you be able to survive, but also uh, help renovate the local community a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, Lauren, did you want to add to that? I did. We, well, we're still talking about sponsors. So our, our second sponsor, our corporate level sponsor, um, and there's still room for more sponsors, but is the Sasa Yurian, which is um, probably the first I'd say sort of luxury level Minka renovation that's become a, you know, a, a property for, for visitors. Um, and the owner, Matsubayashi-san, is he's very much a Renaissance man. He, he runs his own company where he provides um, products for making cosmetics and perfume. But in his traveling abroad for years, when, when the European visitors would come to Japan, he wanted to show them true traditional Japan and he couldn't ever really find a place that, were, that did everything he wanted to do. So he decided to do it himself. So first he bought, I think it's a 300 year old Kominka in, um, uh, it's almost in Mie Ken, it's Nara, um, but it's, it's right on the border with Mie. And he basically stripped it down and completely reformed it 
and it was doing so well. This was probably eight or nine years ago. He's been at it for a while that he built a second one. And the second one is, it's a new build, but using entirely traditional Cominca building techniques. So he found these traditional carpenters and it's, it's beautiful too. So between the two properties, um, he offers amazing experiences. He's also a Shugendo priest. So if you're, when you're there, he'll do a, a fire ceremony, which you see here for you, a Goma ceremony. Um, he'll take you hiking. Um, he'll teach you how to blow a conch. Um, just wonderful experiences while you're there. And I just heard just in the last few days that he's bought a third property in the same neighborhood, the same village. That's not a, exactly a traditional Komenko, but it's an old traditional Japanese house. So that will be his third project is renovating that house. So I'm really excited that he's on board because he's he's certainly been in the trenches of Minka renovation and showing what you can do with the property once you uh, quite exciting. It's absolutely stunning places yeah. that he's renovated and then all the added mm -hmm. value of the mindfulness and the the beautiful right. view and really be able to decompress. I think this is so hard. Even mm -hmm. even though we're more alone in our lives now during coronavirus and working at home, being mm -hmm. away from home but able to relax and see that amazing view and mm -hmm. be around this amazing building that's been restored. How lovely. Yeah. He'd be a great speaker if he's coming to the event too, right? Yeah, well, again, yeah. We're, we're pretty full up, as Wendy said. Stuart said, an embarrassment of riches, but he's very interested. Uh, he's someone who will be involved going forward, and, and certainly for next year, I would, yeah, consider him as a, a possible speaker. Wow, wonderful. I think, I think uh, a lot of yeah. people are going to... I was going to say, I think a lot of people, in a way, almost the best thing about the summit is that people are going to be connecting with one another and making these uh, friendships and lifelong connections. And, you know, I have this this hope that, you know, somebody who has a Minka in some obscure part of some prefecture discovers that there's somebody else who's living just, you know, five kilometers away and had no idea, but they meet at the summit and they make this connection and then they're there they find one another you know and uh the same thing with people that are that have no idea how to deal with um you know insulation or a, some kind of problem they make these connections and friendships mm -hmm. and oh i'll come and help you i'll drive up and you know do the work and i mm -hmm. i think that kind of thing will be in a way the the, the best thing about the summit making these mm -hmm. uh you know, lifelong friendships and contacts. Yeah, sounds great. Um, also, Dave Dave O has said, I love the analog style of communication and community building. So I think he's maybe referring to the, the idea of just putting notes up on clothesline with pin boards, mm -hmm. right? And, and doing old analog style as well as your digital presentations and the, and the tech mm -hmm. having both worlds. But isn't that true of anybody who's interested in renovating a uh, Kominka, right? In our modern lives, we want to renovate in a way that has Wi-Fi mm -hmm. and has insulation, as well as keeps that traditional aesthetic, right? I, I wanted to say too, we it's the Minka Summit and we keep talking Minka Kominka, but this is also applicable for Machia owners. So especially Kyoto, mm. Kanazawa, I think Hiroshima, there's still parts of Japan that do have a lot of townhouses, you know, the old traditional machia. And certainly so much of what will be happening at the summit will be applicable for anyone who's in that boat as well. So we hope to reach out to that population too. Yeah, very. I'm glad you made that point. And another very important point I think that should be made is that um, while the presentations are going to be all in English, we are going to try to have uh, kind of a little corner of the conference room where we can do some simultaneous translation uh, into Japanese for people that, that don't speak English. And uh, I think the uh, throughout the event, there are going to be uh, lots of foreigners that speak very good conversational Japanese. And uh, so... If you're if you're Japanese and you are um, a little bit 
uh, reluctant to come to a, an event because it's, you know, you may be intimidated by the presence of so many uh, foreign residents. Uh, there's no need, need, need to be because mm. there's plenty of Japanese speaking foreigners and spouses of foreigners that are going to be there. And the, the same is true in the Minka Mall. Uh, the way it's coming together is uh, a lot of the booths have people who speak both English and Japanese and even other languages. Uh, and they're all like, oh, if you need help, you know, I can help the people in the, the adjacent booths if they have trouble communicating and stuff. So I think it's going to be this uh, event where people, everybody's going to be helping everybody else, uh, else out in terms of communication. So that won't be a problem. That's awesome. Um, we, we did a SDG seminar the other day and just on the very basic level of keeping it bilingual, while I was speaking in English, I was working with a colleague and she was typing what I was saying in Japanese in the chat box. So you know, like at a very basic tech level, um, just to have that added support in another mm -hmm. language, I think. And then you mentioned on the website, if the talk is in Japanese, you will have someone uh, doing translation or some kind of language support in English, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to try to do that. And of course, you know, this, the speakers themselves are going to be using a lot of uh, PowerPoint type presentations and using a lot of uh, Japanese terminology anyway. So I think even if uh, for some reason we're not able to have a, 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 an interpreter at a particular talk, uh, I think they'll be able to, to follow a lot of what is being discussed. Yeah. Awesome. And I heard a podcast the other day with Japan by River Cruise and uh, Bobby Judo is now renovating a uh, old uh, place in the countryside in Kyushu. And it's not a kominka. It's not a minka. It's, it's not even an akia. It's not an abandoned house yet. It's kind of a modern house, but it has some traditional aesthetic inside. And when they were talking to Alex Kerr, he was giving them some uh, advice about how they could renovate in a good way and what traditional themes, even of a more modern house, there are. So even if you don't have specifically a minka or a kominka or a machiya, mm. or, right? But even if you have mm. a more modern house, I think there's still a lot of knowledge that people can pick up and the community mm. support aspect is still very relevant at this event, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, in, in my village, uh, the village is dominated by Minka, but there are also, there are log houses, there are uh, modern houses. Uh, it's, it's a mix of architecture. Anything else? We've got about eight more minutes. Anything we haven't talked about that you want to touch on? Go ahead, Wendy. Joy, I'm dying to know what you're going to talk about as one of our <laughs> Oh, I forgot. I, I feel like I talk too much. Okay, I'm going to talk about the amazing insights from the series of people I've talked to who have remodeled old houses. Um, Lauren, I might not touch on much about you because you're doing your own presentation, but I have picked up so many great tips and insights from people all over Japan in different areas. So I'm hoping to choose the top 10 of the insights, like different insights from different people around Japan and share those short clips. And uh, if the tech works and if it doesn't, I'll just describe it. <laughs> I'll be flexible. <laughs> but yeah, it should be great. should be lots of fun. Yeah. Thank you for asking me. I'm so <laughs> blessed and excited. And I am I'm like canceling everything around it. I'm gonna drive up, stay a bit longer around the area and really enjoy that whole event experience. So thank you so much for including me. I think it'll oh, be fun for you for too to, to um, meet these people that you've interviewed and actually see them in the flesh and and have have a conversation that way. Absolutely. Even you guys. I've never met you guys in person either. Um, so it's it's just so fun, isn't it? You follow mm -hmm. everybody online, you talk about all these things online, and you feel like you know someone. Mm -hmm. But it's so much fun to follow up and actually meet in person. I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
about five more minutes. Anything else? I was just going to say we sort of skirted around it when Stuart mentioned that we had a heated discussion about when people are going to be able to eat. But I think there are a lot of good food options that have been set up, right? Stuart, do you want to talk a little bit about what the, the eating options will be? Uh, well, the, again, that's still being finalized, but we're, we're going to have on the, at, at the site, there are going to mm. be uh, people selling uh, local foods of, of mm. different varieties, Western foods. I think we're going to have a, like a hot dog vendor, but we're going to have Jap uh, local vendors probably uh, selling things like uh, wild boar hamburgers and deer meat, uh, you know, stuff and things like that, that you can try. And, um, and then there are of course, uh, uh local restaurants that sell, uh, that specialize in selling, uh, dishes made from locally grown vegetables and, and that sort of thing. So, um, I also saw on the so website, there, there will be options. vegan, vegan, vegetarian friendly as well. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. for the Saturday night dinner, uh, we'll have, again, w the mechanics of that are being finalized as we speak. Uh, but the plan is that when you, uh, if you are, if you choose to go to the Saturday night dinner, you will be able to uh, click uh, an option if you're uh, vegan or vegetarian, as well as indicate if you have a, any kind of special food allergies that you need to alert us to. So. Awesome. And all of this sign up action is happening this Monday on the 31st, right? That's the plan. <laughs> we'll see what <laughs> happens. But I think it's coming together. We have, again, this is a, a, an example of how, how great the, the, the membership of the Facebook page has been. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a member uh, named Louise who uh, stepped up and said, uh, I'm happy to volunteer to um, uh, work out the mechanics of the registration uh, the online registration. And then she uh, looked at our website and said, you know, the website is okay, but you can make it a lot more user friendly if you do this, this, and this, and this. And all of her ideas were great. And she's a professional web designer. So she's been uh, really working hard the last couple of weeks. And so uh, we're hoping that by Monday, we're not only going to be able to do online registration, but we're going to have a completely uh, uh, renovated website as well that's going to look a lot better and function and one a lot more, better. One more important thing to mention, there are paid aspects, um, but there are also some free aspects. Um, can you just touch on that? So like the Minka Mall, that'll be free entry for people who wander around. Is that right? Well, basically what it is, is uh, as the uh, event has gotten bigger and bigger, we ha we originally had hoped to be able to do a completely free event, that the everything was going to be totally free. And then uh, as the logistics became more and more costly and complicated, uh, we now have uh, a, a system where you can get a three-day pass or you can get a one-day pass and uh, you can come to the dinner or not come to the dinner, but that's that's an extra charge for that. And uh, we have uh, discounted or free options for uh, seniors and children and students uh, to make it affordable for, for those demographics. Uh, but yeah, there's there are different charge levels for you know depending on how much you how many days you want to come and whether you want to go to the dinner or not. That sounds great. And all of that will be available and clearly listed on the yes. Mika Japan website. <laughs> much right? more clearly, much more clear than it is now. It's a little bit murky. <laughs> all so, right. Well, very uh, exciting. Um, and uh, Dave O has said, thanks so much for managing such a positive and useful Facebook page and group. Mm -hmm. That's great to hear. It sounds like it's yeah, yeah, well, a very active group. It's the members. It's the members that are doing it. It's the, their participation and generosity of sharing their experience and, and information. So credit goes entirely to them. Wonderful. Well, you guys have built the platform. What is it that uh, in the movie dream about baseball, yeah. right? And if, if you build, build it, it they, they will come. come. Yeah. <laughs> So you guys have built it and hopefully they will come 
and they have come online. So hopefully they will come in person as well. <laughs> Now I have this vision of them coming through the, you know, corn and everything. <laughs> through the cornfields. Corn well, that, that's yeah. suitable for the, the location, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all so much. That was a wonderful discussion and really excited about the event. Uh, so excited to also be a part of it. I will be there for the entire time. Really looking forward to meeting Great. people in person and welcoming so many wonderful people interested in this wonderful reuse of old beautiful buildings and styles in japan so thank you all so much for all the work you're doing thank you joy mm, thank you for having us thanks everyone for joining today and have a great weekend take care thanks.